hey guys welcome back so today's video i really wanted to do you guys my son's birth story i started off his journey when i was in 2019 i always did youtube back back in the day but i always used to delete them and i wasn't ready i was going through a lot back then i regret deleting them because it would have been a great transformation how my life just happened now but everything happens for a reason but when i did first time knowing that i got pregnant with my son i started youtube I wanted to change and that's where my YouTube started and it started to grow. So with my son, yes, I had him in 2019. I did start his journey. I wished I did more, but I didn't, but at least there's some there. But I didn't tell you guys the birth story or what exactly happened. I'll be on Instagram telling people like what happened, but I never did you guys an actual story. So. Here's gonna be a story of my son Rahim, of his birth story. He came out natural birth, no gas in him, no pain relief, um, but he came out 36 premature. So I'll tell you why he came out premature and the whole story of his basically birth story. It was such a roller coaster. So make sure you guys do subscribe to my channel, guys. It really does help me out. Thank you for everyone who has been supporting me and showing some love, but let's crack on with the story. Sit back, relax, and I hope you guys enjoy. With my son, Rahim, um, how I found that I was pregnant, I've explained that on my video if you guys want to go watch it. But Rahim was very unexpected. It wasn't like... It's like it was unexpected, but at the same time, it's like when I did find that, it was a shock because it was like, oh my God, like I'm pregnant. But it was more like... Because I missed one day of pill... But me thinking the first time, because I've never missed pills, you know, I, I searched it up and it legitly says it's okay. You can just take two tablets the next day. So my heart healed. I was like, yep, I'm taking two tablets straight away. And I did. I downed two tablets, but I still ended up pregnant. So that was a shock, but it wasn't a shock when I was very depressed or anything like that. It was just like, oh my God, I am pregnant. So... When I did get pregnant with Rahim, I already had two previous girls. Um, I did their birth story, if you guys want to go watch that. And basically, I was happy. You know, I wanted to change. You know, being that I had two previous girls as well, I was very heavily smoking. I wanted to change my life. I wanted to really focus on me, my health, the baby now, enjoying the pregnancy for once in my life. You know, because two of my girls were very just a lot of story if you guys want to go hear it out you guys can go i was going through a lot and i did i moved areas and i was pregnant his pregnancy was amazing i loved it so much um and i didn't even care if it was a girl or boy legitly guys i just wanted to change i wanted to just enjoy pregnancy basically and yeah it was fantastic it was so nice when it did come to the gender guys um i think i was it was like the 20 weeks appointment we went there and I, bear in mind like my my moods were like very chilled back you know, I was just happy. I was very motivated. I had the energy. I was eating good as well. I started to eat my foods. I started to have taste buds. Because when you stop smoking as well, you basically slowly, slowly by weeks go by, your taste buds come back. So I had taste buds. And that's when craving starts to come into your mouth because it's like you stop smoking. So being that I'm pregnant as well, after like... 15 weeks i started to now strive for food so legitly because i was so happy i wasn't even thinking that i'm doing good with my weight you know at the start i was like oh my god i'm gaining a little bit but after that you forget 20 week scan goes now and um, i'm laying there and legitly i remember this when the person was doing it you know um i think i don't know if it was a woman or a guy but my husband said for me not to find out basically because i didn't really want to find out i didn't really care to be honest but my husband really wanted to find out. He really wanted a boy. I, on the other hand, didn't care. When I'm laying there and I went outside, when he came out, I, I knew it straight away. Because one thing, his face went like, you know when someone is so overwhelmed and they blush out basically? 
I saw that in him and I was like, it's definitely a boy. Like, I can see how happy inside you are. And I really wanted a boy as well because I've always wanted one girl, one boy originally. But I had two girls, of course. That's okay. And now I had a boy. So I was like, oh my. But I was pestering him. I can't lie. I did pester him because he was like, I'm not going to tell you, remember. But with me, it's like when someone's already showing me you're bugging me right now it's like i need to know so you might as well tell me now because i can see it from your face so eventually yes he did tell me and i was very happy so literally the whole pregnancy was fantastic the baby was growing i was focusing on myself i was literally happy i was doing myself for once yeah i stopped helping others and focused on myself and my family and that's what made me realize, yeah, like a lot of people that go through depressions and going through hard lives, they help a lot of people as well and they don't focus on themselves. Take a step back and focus on yourself. It really does help. And having the support of him, because I would have not done the smoking queen without him. So I literally did it for the family as well to stop smoking. That's what made me strive for something. You have to strive for something to stop and change in your life. And when I'm telling you, it was the amazing thing I've ever done in my life. So now that I'm doing good, you know, the pregnancy is doing fantastic. You know, if you guys want to go, I have some symptoms I've told you guys. But then when it started to hit like 33 weeks going up, I'm starting to feel now like I'm, I don't know how to say it. Like I get discharges now in this pregnancy. But this one was like, it's like I had this judge, but then it just kind of went like I'll be walking or I could be sitting or I could be doing whatever. But it's like I couldn't control down below. It would just come water out. Like it felt like you peed yourself basically every time, every time. So sometimes it will happen like random. Sometimes it will happen more in a day. Sometimes. So I just thought, yeah, it was just discharge and baby's putting so much pressure. You know, boys more lower. That's what I was thinking. Now, I didn't, I searched it up. I've told my midwife, she said everything was fine. It's natural. So, okay, cool. Now it hit like 34 weeks and it started to be more gush. So it felt like I literally pissed myself and then it stopped. But when I'm looking at it, it was clear. It wasn't we, it wasn't that. So I'm thinking, why am I having something clear? I thought again, natural, it's pregnancy. Every pregnancy is different, right? Now 35 weeks comes and I'm starting to feel like, 33, sorry, going up anyways. I was starting to feel Braxton Hicks already. Um, sometimes I feel nauseous. Sometimes it will come to a day where I, I literally just have pains. And so, yeah, that type of vibe, right? But 35 weeks, that's when I felt a lot of more gush coming out. Not like a gush. It feels like you basically pissed yourself that's what it is but i always just thought baby's really coming low now at 35 weeks you know i felt a lot more gush i think it was like 35 plus one day two days but a lot of gush came out guys like i was sitting down and it wasn't stopping then after that it would stop then it will come back again and then i thought this ain't normal in my mind like i don't find this normal so i was like you know, this. I think it was 35 plus two days where I've slept basically the 35 plus one. Then the next day when I was like 32, 35, sorry, plus two days, I woke up in the middle of the night, like four o'clock in the morning. So now, of course, I'm 35 plus two days. And this is in the morning. So everyone's still sleeping, basically. And I didn't feel the baby move the way I know when you're pregnant, so you hit check and trimester going onwards, you will find out the routine of your baby's movements, what time the baby actually wakes up and blah, 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 blah. It happens in, when they come out as well. So I didn't feel that. I felt the baby kind of like, I don't know. It's like you kind of know in your heart, the baby's not moving as much. Even like the first day, 30, as soon as I hit 35, the baby was moving, but not the way I know the baby moves. And then it felt like it stopped. You know what I mean? And that's when I was figuring out like, wait, yesterday was only moving knit. And then it, it's, you know what I mean? It's like it kind of staged and you kind of deep it now. Like, oh shit, like it was kind of slowing down. 
So seven o'clock now, still baby hasn't moved. So I just got up and I was like to my husband, like curious, I haven't felt the baby move today. Like, I'm just saying, like, I haven't felt the baby move. And I think it was getting the kids ready. Now, we go to the hospital because he was like, you know what, let's just go and check. And that's when I was laying there. And on my Instagram, of course, I was posting a lot of stories. Um, and basically, it was, you know, they were monitoring me. You get to a triage. And the woman looked at me and she was like, why didn't you come before? Like, you know, you telling me that you've been leaking, da 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 da, da. And I told her, because it's normal. Like, I told the midwife, you know, like, it's not like I deliberately wanted this to happen. You know what I mean? Second of all, I told her that it says it on the internet. Like, I searched it up before I went to the midwife, and it says it was normal. She told me it was normal. I won't just read something and just believe it, basically. I would always ask my midwife, so that's what I told her. So I went to the midwife, and I told her, like, I told that, and the woman's like, okay, then. She's like, oh, she was like, well, you should have came. So I just told her straight, yeah, I just patted her up, and I said, yeah, look, listen. I said, every pregnancy is different. I said, you can't just come to me and get so mad at me and just because I didn't come, which nobody kind of knows you what their pregnancy is going to happen. This is my first time it's ever happened. You can't just come for somebody just for because they did not come to a triage. When my midwife, she's the one that maybe was supposed to be telling me to go, but she didn't, she said everything was fine. I believed what that midwife is telling me. <laughs> she kind of piped down because she kind of knew it. Like my attitude with her was like, don't even speak to me. Like I'm not even on that level. So she kind of went away and then she tried to be nice, but I was ignoring her because I was like, with me, it's like, if, if you're going to be disrespectful and you want respect, you got to earn that respect. Don't just come disrespectfulness and then you want me to be nice. Whatever your day was, because it was so busy on that day, it felt like she was so pissed off already. You can tell from someone's mood. So I'm laying there now. She's like, and she basically told me the reason. She's like, because your whole waters is gone. So bear in mind now, that's in my head. So I'm thinking... What do you mean my waters are gone? Like, you're telling me my waters are gone. So I've been leaking all this time, 33 going upwards, and I didn't know, and I told my midwife it was clear, and it was my whole water. Now she's telling me I have to stay there, blah, 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 blah. So I was like, okay, they're still monitoring me, you know, baby. The other woman's doing checkups on me. I'm hearing more ladies are in here, bad more stuff, like someone was bleeding. I was like, oh my God. Now they're looking at me and they take me to a room basically and they basically had to scan me. So they're giving me my own room. It looked like a birthing. I even vlogged it. I still have the story on my Instagram. If you go look at Rahim's highlighted, you would see it there. I basically was on the ball. They were telling me to basically go there because they were going to have to scan me and see what they're going to be doing. So me and my husband, we looked at each, looked at each other and we both knew baby might be coming out a bit more early so i go in this room it was nice i'm not even gonna lie to you it was nice and they scanned me and the doctor was like yes your waters is fully gone you've leaked all your water but now what's leaking because i'm i was still leaking i'm wearing pad like he goes now what you're leaking is called amniotic fluid that is what the baby lives in so I was like, oh my God, I was like, so like, what's going to happen basically? But the person was like, luckily you've got great water inside there because the baby's got enough water to still live. So I was like, oh, thank God. But they had to give me antibiotics because infections can happen and shit like that, basically. So I now was, of course, 35 plus two days, like I said, and I had to stay there for two days. So it was Wednesday and a Thursday. I had to be monitored, I had to get antibiotics. After that, they sent me home. Now, they, when they did send me home, of course, the doctor went to speak to me. They basically said the final decision. They basically said it's either they induced me at 36 weeks or 36 plus, eh? or 36 weeks plus one day. I wanted it over and done with, so I said, instead of just taking that extra day, just do it on the 36 weeks. Just induce me. Let me have the baby naturally, basically. Now, when I went home on a Thursday, Friday now, I wake up. I'm starting to feel a little bit like Braxton's. 
it comes and goes, comes and goes. And then it will stop for quite a long time, then it will come again. I'm thinking already, they're going to induce me anyways, baby's going to come out, blah, blah, blah. Now it comes on a Saturday. On a Saturday, I was legitly one day away from hitting 36. So Sunday was 36 weeks. So when I'm going in there now, on a Saturday at 12 o'clock, I basically had an appointment at 12 o'clock to basically monitor the baby. They wanted to do a last monitoring and then Sunday induce me. But when I'm telling you Friday, like I was telling you, I was getting pains, right? That night of that Friday night, I was feeling now contractions. And I know what pre-contractions kind of feel like, like false attractions. But this, it was going on. Like I could feel it. It was coming. It was like a, like it would come and go, but not too close. It was just coming. So I kind of realized my contract has started because it should have gone a long time ago. I was laying, I was resting. I was, you know, my husband's sleeping. I was awake. I couldn't even sleep at night. That's when you know you're, you're having contractions. You can't even sleep. So when I hit now seven o'clock in the morning, I got up. 12 o'clock was my appointment. I'm telling my husband, I feel like I'm, I'm like I'm now feeling pain that's coming every 10 to 10, like 10 minutes apart, basically. And the pain is lasting for like a minute and a half. So I was telling my husband, I feel like I'm, I'm in contractions already. Like the baby is coming now already. And I have the appointment at 12 o'clock. So I said, what do I do? Because I might as well go to the labor ward. So he's like, we're going to go straight to the triage, straight there, boom, let's see what happens. We're going there now, so we literally going in the triage area and we show the paper that we did have 12 o'clock, but we come in a bit early and we're saying because we're in, I'm in pain. The woman's looking at me because I'm holding a wall and I'm like taking that pain and then after that I'm going toilet because I said I need to go wee. Again, a lot of gush was coming out, so I was like, okay walking back now to the triage the same room that i was laying in that a woman was pissed off at me i go in there now and i'm laying there and the woman was looking at me and she had to you know check me underneath and she was like yes you are like i think i was four centimeters and i knew it i looked at my husband and i was like i'm gonna have a baby but it was so busy they didn't have no room for me to be in my own space my mindset that disappointed me because I really wanted to do you guys a birth vlog. So that kind of made me a bit upset. But at the same time, because I was so excited to see my boy, that just kind of went away. But I was very disappointed. I really did want to have a nice, you know, birth for once. Laying there, had to take it there where there's other people around. And they're telling me to walk, let it go. Bear in mind, I did tell them that I do would like to have like, you know, I would love to have a jewel. I told them that. I was seeing if they can do that. They're just telling me that if there's room, if there's a room. Um, that hospital, I'm not going to lie. It looks like it was supposed to be a great hospital, but it wasn't. The staff was not looking after you, right? I told them I wanted epidural just because, you know, it helps me ease when my heart kind of goes very, very high, you know, with the because I've got heart conditions. So I... They didn't even care with all that kind of vibe. Even people were moaning. There was a lot of women that were bleeding and they weren't doing a great job looking after them for real. So I was just like, you know what? It is what it is. Just, you know, so I'm walking, I'm handling the pain and then I'm not literally, they're like, tell me when it's getting too much. The one woman was very nice. She really did felt for me. So I told her, yeah, this pain that I'm feeling like below, it is bad now. Like, it's getting to that stage where my down below is really hurting me. And I feel, so, I felt so much pressure. You don't understand. It felt like a ring. Like, a baby's head was dead. Like, I just felt that. So, she was like, okay, we're going to try and put you in a room. She put me in a room. But by then, I'm telling you guys, by the time they find me a room, I think it was like 10, 15 minutes. I knew it. The baby's head was dead. Especially, they told me to walk as well. Me stupidly. The their head dropped so much and i had no chance of epidural i had no chance of any pain relief and when i'm there and i'm telling the woman like i can feel the head that's what i mean they were so very bad it's just very sad to see how hospitals 
don't really look after people the way they should be in labor awards like i feel like they should be very nice very gentle very helping them listening to them i didn't get that on rahim i did not get that the woman was like no no you're fine you're not da -da -da. it took me half an hour for me to literally like by now the head is hurting me so much because i've been holding that head and I'm literally now upset. I'm telling them, like, you're not listening to me. My husband was trying to speak to the woman, but he didn't want to get kicked out. So when the woman decided to finally see me, she was like, oh, yes, your baby is there. Because she wasn't believing me because I was, like, five centimeters. But I'm telling her, like, I can feel. Like, if I'm telling you how I'm feeling, you should understand. So when, did she, when she actually went to see, she was like, oh, yeah, your baby is there oh then she was like worrying getting you know people to like not even people it was just one person to come because the baby will be coming out and she was like push so i'm thinking you literally just wasted my whole birth like it's just yeah the other woman was still there by my side bless her so i was literally trying to push this baby out and i knew i had no option but to push the baby out i felt like if they put me in the room and took care of me um, being nice to me and listening to me properly i think i would have handled the pain more better and pushed him up more better and more motivation but because everything was going on so crazy i had the attitude going on you don't want to hear that when you're pregnant especially when you're giving birth it's supposed to be a nice vibe with your husband you know what i mean that got taken away from me so when i'm now telling me to push and things like that my whole mood i'm that type of person my whole mood goes down but I knew in my head the pain was not going to go away unless you push that baby out, like, for real. So I'm pushing out, and finally the head came out, and then the body came out. And I was so happy because everything just stopped the pain. And I was like, thank God. They took the baby. Luckily, the baby was very good. But because he did come out premature, he had very bad jaundice, and he had to be on, like, needles. If you want to go on my story on my Instagram pictures are there he weighed good weight he was like five you know five kg he was five pounds you know it was good but they were very concerned because he had jaundice and i didn't know about jaundice too much but he had a very bad jaundice i couldn't i stayed there for three four days i think it was and because he had to be on the light so it was whole hard for me as well kind of hit me a little bit as well i was upset you know my my i had to literally feed him then quickly put him away i couldn't bond with my son you know what i mean so but i just was positive i have my son i'm gonna go home soon they they didn't even come check up i had to literally keep telling it was a horrible hospital i'm not gonna lie hopefully i'm praying this hospital is gonna be way more better giving birth this time around hashtag baby number five but raheem's story was basically like that yeah raheem came out and i was very very happy i've always wanted a big family so my husband likes that as well this is a girl, of course, and I can't wait to be given birth. But again, once again, I'm hearing might give birth a bit early. Make sure you guys tune into my videos because there's a lot of videos coming out. Make sure you guys tune into my home updates, day in my life, all my videos that I've been posting. I've been very consistent. Hope you guys like this video. Please give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe to my channel. It really helps your girl out. So thank you.